Ever since I was in college, I wanted to go to Adobe Max. The price is pretty steep though, so for me, it was always out of reach. So when I was sitting there one day, and I got this email inviting me and the same group of friends that I went to the San Francisco Adobe Summit with, I knew I had to take that opportunity. So in this video, I wanted to share some stories and take you through the journey of this past week at Adobe Max. The day before I left to LA for the conference was actually my birthday. This place is pretty cool because you pull up on it and it literally looks like a random strip mall or something, like nothing too fancy, but when you go in, it's on some crazy, you know, fine dining type beat. It's honestly an unreal and fun experience. A perfect birthday dinner and a great way to calm my nerves for this trip ahead that I've been looking forward to going to. Now that I'm a freelancer, I almost never wake up earlier than eight or nine. Starbucks, sop, that cold brew. Mm. When I first pulled up to the hotel, it was pretty weird. The lobby was on the 34th floor and there was like this dual set of elevators you had to take to get around that didn't make much sense to me, but I was grateful because the room was dope and I loved the view. Pretty dope. Nice, small, but clean, chill. Little bed set up. Look at that. And I'm grateful that Adobe hooked it up with a spot literally right across the street from the convention center that we're gonna be going to. And my boy Duran ended up being in the hotel right next door. Hey, what's up? Hey. What up, dude? How are you? Good, how are you doing? From there, I met up with a few other friends and we started making our way to the early morning summit at the neighboring hotel. Before we get into all that, let me give you a little bit of background on what's happening. If you don't know, Adobe Max is this conference each year that brings together some of the best creatives around the world for workshops, talks, and more. They have everything from the best designers, directors, and photographers to, you know, tech companies, studios, and more. It's always an event that I wanted to go to, but the ticket price has always been pretty insane. So I decided a few years ago this, I will either be invited to Adobe Max one day or I won't go, but here we are. It was pretty similar to this other summit I went to with the same crew in San Francisco. You know, lots of advancements in different programs, early access to new Adobe stuff that they're doing, and if we're being real, way too much talk about AI. However, there were some cool things I can talk about now. The one feature that stood to me personally wasn't even a graphic design one. It was in Premiere Pro. They added this enhanced speech feature that makes shitty audio sound good. Other than that, it was a chill meeting and everyone on the Adobe team is always so nice. And I also got to meet a few new friends that I've known online, like Ben and Kat. Hey man, what did you think of all those advanced features that we're not allowed to talk about? Okay, let me list everything they just said. <laughs> After the summit thing, we all headed to the hotel bar for our free drinks. At one point, Jack tried to get us all around to tequila shots, but I guess they weren't having that, and they didn't want a bunch of belligerent designers running around the hotel. My group of friends, um, I think the reason I gravitate towards them is they we definitely seem kind of like the D-gens at all these events. In the best way possible, I think the Adobe staff has what I would call a love-hate relationship with us. Yes! Let's fucking go! The hotel rooftop thing ended pretty early, so we all met up at Duran's floor and decided to Uber to Red Lion's Tavern. We met up with a few other people online too, like this dude Noah and the homie Swoop. It's a video. Oh. <laughs> you got me. I had known Swoop online for a little bit, so it was cool finally meeting him in person and getting to hang out for a little bit at the bar. Red Lion Tavern was fun because we could fit all of us on this giant table and, you know, just hang out and talk as a big group. And shout out to this dude Noah, who I just met for covering the entire tab. At the end of the night, on our Uber ride home, the driver literally crashed into a curb. Funniest part was the driver literally did not acknowledge it at all. He just dropped us off and said, have a nice night. And we called it kind of early, knowing we had to wake up for some reason at like 7 a.m. again. So this was the first official day of Adobe Max and we had the keynote. It was crazy being in such a large auditorium for something like Adobe or graphic design related. 
The intro was amazing and definitely a cool like human made motion graphics system that completely overpowered and shit on all the AI generated stuff we saw later. Seeing Anna do a keynote was cool because she was one of the girls that we were hanging out with at the Adobe Summit last time a little bit. And a few other cool advances like the enhanced speech for Premiere, text to vector generation in Adobe Illustrator, and text based editing in Premiere also. One of our favorites from the Adobe team too, Paul Tranny was there getting down on Adobe Express. And I respect Paul because he always brings the best energy to the presentations and you know makes me engaged in something that I would otherwise not care about like Adobe Express. After the presentation, an insane amount of people all started walking to get this grab-and-go free lunch. The lunch was so mid though, I barely took a picture of it, but I was starving and just had to get something in my stomach. And I was excited to check out a few of the booths before my first presentation. I was kind of just walking around and then I got a text from Piper when I was in the bathroom that said they had a Draplin booth. I walked over there with Duran and was hella nervous telling him in the picture line that he wasn't gonna remember me, the podcast we did together. I don't know if I've talked to him online, but I don't wanna bring it up, this and that. Luckily enough, he pointed at me when I was in line, like, get over here, and he, he remembered me uh, right away, and that was cool, and I was kinda riding on that dopamine hit the rest of the day. There's something so special about someone you look up to reciprocating that kind of love and respect. For the NASA thing. Yeah, I'm going to. Playing basketball. Okay. Is that a regular size basketball and you're a giant? Yeah. Honestly, they had some cool slides and I was stoked to see the logo design stuff they do internally at NASA. They had some cool logo marks for the Mars rover and things. But honestly, the cool design stuff I liked the most, they kind of glossed over and focused more on the video and storytelling aspects of the brand. Overall though, it was a decent presentation and I enjoyed it enough. However, Eli, not so much. Yo, man, what'd you think of that NASA fucking conference? More dude? like NAPSA. That shit put me to sleep. <laughs> I was snoozing on that rocket launch. One thing I noticed after the keynote and that NASA presentation is my attention span and back are fucked. I can barely sit still and listen to those talks in those small chairs for an hour like that. And I'm so glad I'm not in school anymore and have to do that every day. Also too, I just wanted to say, even though I'm complaining about such first world problems, I wanna explain how grateful I am for these kind of opportunities. It's crazy that just about a few years ago, I was sitting in my apartment in college, dreaming about being able to go to these and feeling very outside of like the design industry and the zeitgeist and what was going on and what was cool. It's so rewarding to be involved in a design community, have good relationships with those people and other IRL friends that show me love, a good, you know, stable relationship with my partner and overall just feeling proud of myself in my career and quite honestly probably for the first time ever anyway sad origin story interlude thing over let's get back into it <laughs> <laughs> I also ran into Geo at this point, who was going buck wild trying to get this game done on the Adobe Max app where you scan a QR code at every single booth there. Oh, hi, you're the, what, you do like really cool shirts. No, not shirts. No, 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 no. You do like those. Like Man's butchering this like intro right here. We got uh, some Polaroids done too, which was pretty cool. And after that, I headed back to the hotel to chill before our last presentation of the day. Yo, so I just got back from the first day at the Max convention. And honestly, some of the workshops and stuff I've done have been pretty cool, but overall a little bit underwhelming. Uh, I ran, I went to Aaron Draplin's booth. And I got him to sign the field notes, little signature. Threw a little sticker on the back, you know? So I'm pretty stoked on that. It was time for the talk that we had all signed up for, and it was with the infamous Chris Doe. It was all about personal branding in this modern day and age. And to be honest, Chris Doe is not the exact type of personality that I gravitate towards. He uh, is very invested in the finance and marketing and money side of things in the design world. But with that being said, that man can give a damn good presentation. He is very talented at capturing your attention and breaking down very complex ideas into digestible and actionable tips 
The thing that probably stood out to me the most was this idea of karmic equity. Chris Doe explained how the more you add value to others' lives, you build up this karma. And every time you ask your community or audience for something in return, you spend that karmic equity. It goes all the way back down to zero to rebuild it again before you can ask for another thing. So, you know, you can't always be selling to your audience or asking them for things without offering consistent value in return. We all left that talk feeling very inspired and ready to cultivate our personal brand. Think of the convention so far. It's good. I was trying to think of something funny, but it's good. It's good? Yeah. That's, it's fun. Uh, yo, what do you think of the convention so far, yo? Lame, boring, underwhelming. Um, At this point, all the events were done for the day, and we went to the reception to hang out. And they had some pretty decent food. Tortilla sucks. It's not red enough. They didn't cut it off the shawarma mm -hmm. type of thingy, whatever you call it. No spice. Yeah, I'll give it a <laughs> 4 out of 10. Wow. It sounded like a 1 out of 10 based on the description. I think this <laughs> That was has nothing a, but complaints. Yeah, he's a heart of gold. No redeeming factor. And Adobe won me over by supplying the boys with some Modellos. Dream sponsorship trio for me, Carhartt, Modelo, Doc Martens. We were honestly just walking around with hella beers and talking to people, and this was a lot more of a fun and loose environment than some of the other meetups and events. How's the tacos? Uh, these are the best tacos I've ever had. I waited uh, four hours in line for them, and they saved my whole life, so thanks. We even took some beers for the road and ended up having to chug a bunch of them. Woo! Yes! Let's fucking go! Where are we going? <laughs> At this point, I just thought we should gather everyone up, meet at the hotel lobby while we figure out where to go next. This is also where Duran and I were big chilling in these giant chairs at the hotel, and I took what he called the worst photo of my entire life. It was honestly a fun night hanging with everyone there at 4100. I used to hang there every Thursday when I lived in LA, and it was cool having all my graphic design homies there. When orders one, they're like, I'll, have, I'll get one of those too. And the guy, the guy opens the door, he's like, put some martini, I'll, I'll, I'll have one. Yo, yeah. And it's in the martini, boys. You started to have Martini. We also got to hang out with uh, some other people that I hadn't met before, like Kat, Kanat, and Fuller Mo. Plus, we met this dope children's book illustrator, Katie, who we kind of indoctrinated into our graphic design Illuminati group. And Gio was even getting down on some cool little type experiments for each of our names while we were chilling at the bar. It's live. It's live. Now put it, just hold it up. Yeah. I was pretty drunk already, so honestly, I passed out right when we got back to the hotel. I, was, I knew I'll be good the next day. This talk was from Annie Atkins, who makes all this amazing print design that's used in movies, most famously the Wes Anderson films. Definitely go check out her work, it's super dope. I was really excited for this one because Draplin was speaking and the topics were more idea-based and less about tech. You gotta do it yourself, especially when they give you a book deal, okay? Because <laughs> Draplin killed it, everyone was cracking up, and he reminded me why he's the GOAT. And the people I was with who were more unfamiliar with him were definitely like, oh, I see why you like this dude now. There was another speech by Walker Noble Studios who had a cool story about getting his art into a bunch of retailers and just doubling down on himself and how he barely had any social media following compared to a lot of the guests and speakers there. But he was still here and still paid to speak and is making an entire living off just making art. It was a pretty good presentation overall, and they had a few things that stuck out to me. Specifically this one on repeat clients. A repeat client is so much more valuable because you don't have to go through all that whole process of all that stuff that's on the left side. 
dead, dude. This, this that shit that makes you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. It was honestly so jokes hanging out with Duran and Eli. They remind me so much of my friends I hang out with. And we were talking about how it's nice we could joke around, kind of be sarcastic assholes to each other. We're just people that I met online and it could have easily gone to shit. Our old mayor of Toronto, Rob Ford, was like, uh, someone said like, he's, he's cheats on his wife, he cheats on his wife. And he went on live air and he said, trust me, I have enough to eat at home. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> Once it was time, we all squatted up and headed to this Max Bash thing. It was so busy there, and I was surprised at how many people were there. Like, it, it was like everyone that you didn't see at the convention there at once. The surprise DJ they had too was Rev Run from Run DMC. It's hella random, but pretty cool, honestly. You're drinking raw honey. Nah. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, all right, maybe it's like the coolest thing I've ever been to. I don't know. I don't know. It's like maybe like the best DJs, the freest beer. We also ran to our homie who works at Photoshop, Steven, which was nice because earlier in the week we didn't have enough time to harass him. I also ran into Gox, probably my favorite artist on YouTube and it inspired me so much early on to even start doing anything like this on here. Once we got back to the hotel, we hung out at the rooftop bar again for a bit and redeemed our free drink ticket. It's always video. Overall, it was a super fun night and we wanted to keep it going. So as we were leaving, we hear this uh, worker say, yo, go to level eight bar. Level eight bar, so cool at the hotel. I swear it was kind of some kind of conspiracy or something, or level eight was you trapped in the back rooms or maybe level A is where they hide the scratch discs. Us and a bunch of other people at the hotel were kind of just hanging out in the lobby and could not figure out where this level eight was. There's a cover. It felt like, you know, one of those late nights when you hang out with your homies in the backyard or when you and your close friends are the only ones left at a house party. It was such a good ending to a great day. And we all said our good nights and some goodbyes for the people who we went and see the next day and went our little separate ways. Yo, so I'm here uh, on the morning after the last day. Shout out to all the people who um, came up to me at the Adobe Mac. It's funny to think that people were nervous coming up to me considering I was doing that to other people and I still feel like far removed from any type of notoriety or, you know, influence and stuff like that. But that was pretty cool to hear like some of you younger designers coming up to me and saying very nice things about how I helped you with your work or with developing a style or just any development in your career. I'm glad I could help in any way, you know, and thank you. It was bittersweet. I was excited to go home and see my girl and relax, but also we'll miss hanging out with that crew because I don't know when we're all going to get together in the future. I'm sure though when we do, it will be another fun time. I'm on my way home.